Hi everyone, this is Tristan from School of Synthesis with part two of this Synthwave sound design tutorial. So back in part one, we built the basic framework for a Synthwave track, just with some retro drum samples and a pair of synth parts. Uh, I would encourage you to go back and watch part one for a bit of insight into that process, because we built these two synth parts from scratch using Carbon Electra. Uh, we're pretty much going from where we left off in this video. I have embellished the drums a little bit. There's a bit more hi-hat variation. I've created one new bass part, which is just this repeated A note. So let me show you what it sounds like so far. Here's the bass playing that A note with a kick in the snare. And here is the bass doing that E in the F sharp part over the synth pad, or under the synth pad I should say, with a 16th note hi-hat as well. Okay, pretty simple stuff, but there's a bit of a vibe there already. Um, everything, so the pad, the bass, and the hi-hat are all going through that sidechain compressor, which is being triggered by the kick. So there's a bit of kind of unified rhythmic propulsion there. And the synth pad here is really filling things out nicely, but there's obviously plenty of room to expand from here. So now let's add two new synth parts to this track. Uh, their purpose will be one, to add a bit of extra texture to the song, but also add some melody. So this will help the song be a bit more hooky and hopefully more memorable as well. Uh, so first of all, these two synth parts we already have were built using very similar techniques. That is a pair of sawtooth waves with an envelope closing the filter. Pretty simple. Uh, this time we're going to be venturing into some slightly more advanced modulation techniques. And we're going to be building the tracks using a pair of square waves for a bit more of a novel approach. So let's drag in a new instance of Carbon Electro. And this is going to be sort of an 80s Juno-ish sort of polyphonic key sound. So let's rename this track Keys. And I'm just going to turn the tracks level down a bit. And let's open up Carbon Electric. I'm going to start off pulling up a pair of square waves on oscillators two and three. The reason for which will become apparent soon, I hope. Uh, let's start off with this amplifier envelope. I'm going to give it this sort of aggressive punchy sound. So it's going to clamp down on the, on the volume as soon as I play a note to give it that kind of compressed punchy sort of sound. That's pretty good. Let's detune oscillator three a bit. Fatten it up a bit. So far, so good. Now let's use LFO2 to give a bit of pulse width modulation. Uh, this is going to give that nice kind of gooey 80s retro sound. All right, let's slow the rate down a bit. Nice, just adds a bit of nice gooey movement to it. Now I'm also going to use the LFO1 here, but to modulate the pitch of oscillators 2 and 3. Uh, this is going to give it that sort of detuned cassette tape sort of vibe. It can get really out of hand if you do too much modulation. So let's keep it really subtle. We're going for about 5 or 6% on both oscillators. You can use shift to do more fine adjustments here. 5 and 6 is pretty good. Again, let's slow that down a bit. Not bad, I think I like that. Finally, let's add a bit of um, envelope modulation to the filter as well. I can't resist. It's not bad, a bit of resonance maybe. Nice, that sounded pretty good. Finally, a bit of reverb as well. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's quickly record a keys part. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's check it out in context. Not bad. Let's add one more keys part to this E and F sharp part as well. All right, let's give it a shot. I think 
that was pretty good. Let's just have a quick listen. I think that's okay. Let's move along. So let's add one more synth part to the track. And this is gonna be a synth lead sound. So let's drag in another instance of Carbon Electra. And I'll rename this track Lead. And we're gonna build this track a pretty similar way. Let's take down that volume again. This time with the pair of square waves and oscillators one and two. That's pretty good. This time, instead of detuning oscillator two, I'm actually gonna put it in sync. So now it's gonna restart its cycle every time oscillator one restarts its cycle. So they, it's like they share the same frequency. It's a cool sort of effect we get. And we're gonna modulate that pitch using this envelope here. Let's set up our kind of go-to modulation shape. And here's the knob to add some modulation depth. It's pretty good, slow it down a little bit. Nice, the classics of the lead sound. I go a bit of pulse width modulation as well. Might darken it up a little bit as well. Okay, it's pretty good. Now let's um, add a bit of effect on top. We can do this a couple of ways. One is just use a phaser. That's pretty instant gratification. However, let's try using a delay. So we're gonna turn on the delay and turn the delay time down a lot. So it's really, really quick. Take down that feedback and increase the mix quite a bit. That's sort of like a doubling sort of slapback effect we get. Really cool for lead sounds. Let's add a bit of modulation to those delays uh, to thicken things up. Nice, that's sounding pretty cool. Uh, the last thing I noticed is that the track's starting to drag a little bit. I think I want to speed things up. Let's crank it up to about 110. Let's try that one more time. Okay, let's have a listen to it now. Okay, one last thing I'm going to do to this lead sound is put it into a monophonic mode, which is good for lead sounds. And then I turn on re-trigger. This is going to re-trigger that envelope, giving us our sync sweep sound every time I play a note. Nice, that's all sounding pretty good. Let's go ahead and lay down a melody. Let's have a listen to all that. Let's just duplicate this keyboard part. Add a bit of reverb to the lead as well, and I think we're good to go. Let's check it out. <laughs> 